All right, you guys, we are back with another video, probably the earliest I've ever done an intro. It's like 9.30 in the morning and we're at Agua Caliente. We played 10 hours last month. That gets us an entry into today's free roll. Not only that, we get a ticket and a drawing every hour for the next 14 hours. They're calling a name anywhere from 500 to $1,500. So you know your boy is gonna make a video about it. 14 hours at Agua. Let's show what the grind is all about. Hopefully I'm gonna make 2K today. That is the goal with all the money they're adding in and my 14 hours of play plus the free roll tourney stay tuned for the ride let's get in the hands let's go quick shout out to the sponsor of this video i recently got shown this free texas hold'em app called kung fu poker it's a neatly designed poker game that i found is very easy for new players to navigate you can compete with players worldwide on the go anytime anywhere which is great if you want some practice at trying new strategies out without breaking the bank check the description link to download kung fu poker and use my exclusive code wolfgang poker to get 30,000 in free chips keep an eye out you might also see me playing on there as well. Bang! Waiting for the free roll to start, we sit down at the 1-3 table and end up making $77. We finally make it over to the free roll and start the day with $30,000 in our stack. We're up to $90,000 in our stack at break 1. We then get an all-in through with King Jack offsuit and make it to the final table. We have $90,000 in our stack. There's 9 left and 5 pay $300. With 6 people left, we get it in small blind versus big blind. We're in the big blind with ace 4 and uh, the opponent turns over ace king. Somehow he limped and then I shoved and he called. The flop turn and river are no good for us, and he's going to eliminate us in 6th place. The entire table cheers except for us. They just made 300 bucks, and we're out in 6th place. 5 people pay. We are the stone cold bubble. Alright you guys, well we bubbled that tournament. Not the way we wanted to start the day, and there's been 2 drawings. Haven't got our name called yet. We're going to hop into the 1-3 streets. We're on the board for 2-5. That's a 2k cap. Let's just jump right into the hands. Hopefully we can win a drawing or some hands. Build a nice little chip stack. Wish me luck. Let's go. We sit down at the 1-3 table waiting for a 2-5 seat. We end up losing $71 in around an hour and a half waiting for the 2-5 game. We witness quads at the table which is pretty cool to see. We're finally into the 2-5 for 1929. First day of the night, we look down at king-queen offsuit from the small blind. Matt in the cutoff raises it up to $25. I 3-bet him to $85, which is pretty standard. We have a little bit of history. He puts in the call, and we're going heads up out of position to a flop, which gives us two overcards. It comes jack, six, deuce. They're definitely a dang flop here. And to make matters worse, the floor comes over and tells me to stop filming. I'm flustered. I'd normally probably go for a c-bet, especially against Matt. But uh, in the moment, I decide to check, and Matt decides to check behind. We're off to the turn. Turn comes the five of diamonds, and I now decide to bet out for $70 into Matt. Going for the delayed C bet here, I still could represent some jacks or maybe a hand like tens or nines. Matt's a sticky player though. He puts in the money, and we're off to the river, which most definitely gives us the best hand. It comes the queen of clubs. Definitely a great spot for us. He only has around $350 left in his stack, so naturally I'm going to jam it in here and put him to the test. If he thinks I'm bluffing, he's going to have to pay it off, but uh, unfortunately he finds a fold, and we're just going to take down that first pot of the night. Marcello, what just happened? We just hit a $200 drawing, baby. Woohoo! Chop that, chop that up. And he just hit a $10 drawing for a little basketball pick. $110 in like two minutes. Great hour, Lee. Let's go. After winning $110 in about two minutes, we look down at Pocket Kings. You're probably wondering, how am I filming after the floor told me to stop? Well, I appreciate everyone at Agua Caliente. I'm not going to take the L here. I came to play 14 hours, so I'm going to go into stealth mode now and make a vlog for you guys. I look down at Pocket Kings from the big blind. Jerry, another cool local reg here, opens it up to $20, and I 3-bet him to $65. Not making any friends at this table, he puts in the call and we're going heads up to the flop. With 137 out there, the flop comes above optimal, king 7 deuce, bang, we flop top set. I bet out for a little less than half pot for $55, he can call with any of his under pairs, any of his spade draws, so I like my $55 bet here and Jerry does as well, he tosses in the call. When the turn comes, an innocuous 6 of clubs, I think we need to be going for a large sizing here. Charge him for the maximum with any of his draws, and if he somehow has the case king in his hand, we need to charge the maximum. I bet $200 looking to get stacks in by the river but Jerry's a good player he folds his cards he knows that he's beat and we're two for two on the session up $160 so far 
Next hand, we look down at Ace, Jack of Spades from the small blind. The button, who is huge action at this table, opens it up to $35. Not going to let that go unpunished. I probably could go for a larger sizing, but I decide to go for the three bet to $80. Button's not one to fold any two cards. He puts in the call, and we're going heads up the flop, which gives us top pair, Ace, King, Nine with two clubs. Action's on me, and I decide to go for a $45 bet into the $160 pot. The action player puts in the call. That's great news for us. He's continuing with a large portion of his range here and we're off to the six of hearts on the turn another great card for us the front door club draw does not get there so now i'm going to size up here and grab a bunch of green chips christmas out there greens and reds 165 dollars is the bet i expect him to call with any ace any king and any flush draw and sure enough he does he tosses in 165 dollars and uh, we're off to a river here in a nice size pot which comes a seven of spades yes thank you dealer nice card for us but I'm going to get a little trappy here, and here's why. If he has a hand like Queen Jack, Queen 10, or any club draw, he's not going to call us for any bet. But he's the type of player, if I check it over to him, he definitely would go for a bluff. I'm really only missing value against any king, but I doubt he'd call a large sizing here on the river with any king. So for that reason, I get a little trappy here and check it over to him. If he goes for a $100 to $300 bet, we're just going to be snap calling him. And he does go for a bet, but it's all in $680 into the $587 pot. Definitely putting us to the test. I told you guys I'd snap call for a small sizing, but 680 isn't exactly small. It's definitely a polarizing bet, which usually means he has the nuts or nothing. And I think there's a lot more nothing in this action player's hands than uh, really good cards. So for that reason, I nut up here and I take a stack of 680 and uh, put it into the middle. That's a call, buddy. You're going to have to show me a better hand if you want to take this $2,000 pot. But he said he was bluffing and I'm good. So I turn over the ace jack immediately. I usually wait to see what the opponent has before turning it over here. But I don't want to slow roll the action guy, especially because we're going to be playing for another six hours with him potentially so a lot of money to be made i turn over my cards and he mucks his hand two thousand dollars coming our way let's freaking go really stoked on how i played that last hand and glad that i found a call for the over pot size shove i look down at pocket tens here from under the gun and i open it up to twenty dollars we get one or two callers nope we get three callers we're going four ways to the flop with 80 bucks out there the flop comes five five deuce with two hearts so when the action checks over to me i go for a half pot size bet i probably could size up and charge any of the heart draws the maximum i bet out for forty dollars in a small blind and Matt both put in the call. If we weren't ahead on the flop, we're definitely ahead on the turn. It comes a 10 of clubs. Bang, we turn top boat. Action checks to me for a second time, and now I'm going for extra value. I bet out for $80. Matt on the button goes into the tank. I definitely want to take my friend's money here, but unfortunately he folds. But good news for us, we get a consolation prize in the fact that the small line puts in 80 bucks. And we're off to the three of diamonds on the river. Barring any five, there's no way we are going to be piling more money in on the river. When the small Small blind checks it over to me. I think about betting pot. And then I also think about going for a 10% pot size bet here, like 30 or 40 bucks, just trying to trick the opponent into raising me up here. But ultimately, I decide on going for value $115. Unfortunately, though, the opponent doesn't want to put any more money in the middle. He folds his cards, but it's nice to be up $1,400 on the session. Great news for us, the good hands just keep coming. I'm in the plus one position with ace queen of hearts. The $10 straddle's on and I'd raise it up to $35. There's two callers, and now the straddle, who's that crazy action guy that tried to bluff us earlier, goes for the raise to $235. If you guys thought I was folding a hand as strong as ace-queen suited to a maniac who showed me a bluff earlier, you guys are out of your mind. I, of course, put in the call. I could also think about isolating here and just rip it in, not looking to go three or four ways to a flop here, but luckily, we just go heads up versus the maniac, which comes 7-3 deuce rainbow, and the maniac actually checks in the dark. Pretty strange line here. Do I bet and try to get him to fold a worse hand i just don't think he's gonna fold anything like king jack king 10 queen jack anything like that and he's just gonna snap us off with any of his pocket pairs so i decide better of it and check behind which brings in the jack of diamonds on the turn if he checks to me now i'm definitely gonna go for a bet here when he checks twice but unfortunately he does not decide to do so he bets out for 235 dollars the same bet that he made at preflop and i have no choice but to fold here let me know down in the comments if you guys would have played that hand any differently 3100 dollars in our stack I look down at ace eight of spades. I'm in the straddle. I'm good for some action here or there. And there's two calls to the big blind who makes it $50. 
Ace-8 of spades is probably just better played as a three bet or a fold, and I kind of just like folding, but I have a big stack here. I want to win a large pot, so I end up putting in the call, looking to flush over flush somebody, and there's two other players that call as well. Going four ways to the flop, which gives us top pair, Ace-7-10 with two hearts, and the action actually gets checked around here, which is definitely an interesting line, but the queen of spades peels off on the turn. Would have loved there to be another spade on the flop. When the small blind bets out now for $75, I think it's too weak for me to just fold just yet. I have top pair, which could be good, and it could just be value betting any hand, maybe with a king in it or a one pair type hand that we have beat. When the river comes to five of spades, I'm hoping he'll check it over to me, then I can go for thin value. That's not what he does. He puts in a stack of red and says all in. $180 is the effective bet. I look down at my hand one more time, but uh, this is definitely just not a bluff. He's going for value here, so I decide to muck my cards. He ends up turning over one card for us. It is a seven of clubs, and uh, he mucks the other one, but later tells us he had my favorite hand, pocket seven. So great fold for me there. He was trying to trap on the flop, but I ended up saving $180. So naturally, we're going to get rewarded awarded with pocket kings once again the cowboys from the hijack the low jack who is the action player raises up to 35 dollars three bet incoming for me i'm just picking on this guy all night i make it 95 dollars like i said he's not one to fold his cards he puts in the call and we're off to the flop which comes queen nine three with two clubs Having the king of clubs in my hand is definitely a nice card to have, and I expect him to check it over to me, but what do action players do sometimes? They just do some random plays, and he bets out into me for $65. Definitely seems like a blocking type bet, but in case he has a weird hand like queen 9 or queen 3 or 9-3, I just decided to call him here, especially because I have the king of clubs in my hand. And if I was worried about being beat on the flop, I am no more. The turn comes the king of diamonds. Bang, we turn a set of kings. Second one on the night and definitely very much appreciated. The low jack checks it over to me and there's 327 in the middle. I'm going to go for $190. If he has any 10 or jack in his hand, I expect him to call this bet. Any hand with two clubs in it will also pay this off. But unfortunately, uh, we turn our set and it might have been a little bit of overkill because Lojack mucks his cards. How did he have none of that? Unfortunate we didn't get any more money, but happy to turn the second set of kings on the session. Coming off pocket kings, we look down at them once again. Are our eyes playing tricks on us? No, we actually do have pocket kings. This time from the big blind, the $10 straddles on, two callers over to me. Pretty great spot to go for a re-raise. I make it $55. The straddle and one of the callers fold, but the small blind puts in the money. Great news for us. We're off to a flop, which comes king, jack, eight. Bang, we flop top set again. Are you kidding me? Three sets of kings. What is going on here? Absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like it. When the small blind checks it over to me, I'm trying to finally get value with my set of kings. Didn't get any in the last hand, so I decided to check it back here, which I think is a mistake. In the moment, I was just trying to slow play this hand. Considering when I made the hand last time, everyone folded. This time, there's a lot of draws out there, so I think I like a $60 to $75 bet. Either way, though, when the five of diamond peels off on the turn, our check on the flop gets the small blind to bet into us for $70. And now, I think it'd be good to spring the trap. Need to charge the opponent the maximum and try to get more money in the middle. I raise it to $200, only $130 more for the opponent to call. But unfortunately, it's like deja vu because whenever I make my set of kings and then go for a large bet, everyone just folds. The small blind's no different here. He mucks his cards and we're going to take down yet another pot. So not only was I the bubble boy, we have some bad news to report. Marcelo, what happened? Put it all in with the small blind in it, ace deuce, spiked an ace on the flop, and she had 6-7. She Set. So we were both the bubble, and then Marcelo's dad back there. He was the, the se he was the second bubble, and there's Tavi. We were all bubble boys today. Yeah, in the tournament. Real sad. Okay, we're done feeling bad for ourselves. We're back to the poker. We look down at king queen offsuit, and there's a few limps to me. I'm in the big blind, and I make it twenty five dollars. Only the button and the small blind put in the call. We're going three ways to the flop. 75 out there. The flop comes pretty good for us. King, queen, five. We flop two pair. Small blind checks it over to me. Being in between two opponents, I usually like to start with a check. There's not really too much I'm worried about. Maybe hand like jack 10. But either way though, I check it over to Matt and he goes for a $55 bet. Falling into the trap. I love it. Small blind folds and I put in the call. Not going to go for the check raise here. And the seven of diamonds peels off on the turn. 
check it over to Matt for the second time, and maybe he's watched some of my videos. He knows that pocket sevens is my favorite hand because he decides to check behind, which brings a six of hearts in on the river. With 185 out there, I've definitely underplayed my hand, so I need to go for a good size bet here. But before I can even get my bet out there, Matt mucks his cards. Pretty funny, but you know what's not funny? We're up $1,200 on the session. If you're wondering why we're dancing and screaming in the casino, it's because our ticket got pulled for $1,000. I'm half-half with Marcelo, so we both get $500, but pretty sweet to add another $500 onto the profit total for today. Boys just hit a free roll. Let's go, baby. Let's go. No. $1,500, Marcelo. Oh! Frankie looks at me and he goes, and I'm like, already counting my victories. It was the dad instead of the son. <laughs> Pretty crazy turn of events there. Marcelo's dad gets called instead of him. We obviously thought we were making $750 each. Oh well, we're back to the poker and we look down at 7 8 of spades from the big blind. Gonna have to make my own action here. The button limps, the small blind makes it $20. I put in the call and the button does as well. We're going three ways to the flop, which comes 8 8 6. Bang! We flop three of a kind. Action's on the small blind and he continues for $30 and naturally I put in the call. Could be going for the raise here, but considering I have the 7 of spades in my hand, I could also back into any straight, so I'm not really worried about too much. It's also a spot where we're either way ahead or way behind, so I like my call here and the button gets out of the way, going heads up to the turn, which comes a five of clubs, giving us the open-ended straight draw now as well. Action's on the small blind and he bets out for $170 now into the $120 pot. And like I said on the flop, we're either way ahead here with our three of a kind or we're way behind if he has a hand like 10-8, ace-8, something like that. So $170 seems like a fair price to me. I toss in that much worth of green chips and we're off to the river when the river comes a beautiful three of spades no diamond no club that's great news for us actions on the small blind 460 out there and now he goes for a bet of 400 dollars actions on me i take a second and pause here obviously we have a great hand do i go for the raise now and spring the trap i just don't really think i can get called by worse for instance if i raise it up here to like a thousand bucks he's just gonna call me with set of sixes set of fives and he's definitely gonna be snapping me off with ace eight king eight stuff like that and any of his flush rows aren't gonna call a raise as well so as weird as it sounds i'm just gonna flat call here with my three of a kind four hundred dollars goes into the middle the opponent ends up turning over queen six of clubs so ended up having two pair eights and sixes with the flush draw i dodged a good amount there and we're gonna get rewarded with that nearly thirteen hundred dollar pot probably could have got it all in on the turn but when he overbet the turn i just didn't want to put in the raise we're up seventeen hundred dollars on the session we look down at the last hand of the night the bullets the pocket aces and go figure this is the last hand of the night and it's definitely a crazy one stick it through pocket aces in the cutoff the hijack who's the action player from before raises it up to thirty dollars and i three bet him to 105 expecting to go heads up with the action player but that's not what happens when the small blind the big blind and the action player and the hijack put in the call we're going four ways to the flop with a cool 420 dollars in the middle the flop comes 10 5 8 rainbow I'm in the cutoff and the action checks over to the hijack. He bets out for $105. He's not one to wait to put money in the middle. Do I go for the raise here or do I just flat call the 105? With three other players in the hand, anyone could have fives, eights, or tens. So I think I'm just going to put in the call here for 105 bucks. And now the small blind re-raises it to $250, a small raise at that. When the hijack just flats calls for $250, I think about my options here. I'm obviously not going for the re-raise. Can I ever fold here? The small blind is definitely representing a strong hand like a set. That's definitely what I'm putting him on here in the moment. But I still have pocket aces, and it's only around $150 more for me to call. The pot's huge. I put it in the middle. And the turn peels off the jack of clubs, completing the most obvious front door draw being 9-7. When the small blind just rips it in for $525, we're probably just going to have to fold here. But when the hijack flat calls the 525, we're definitely out of the way. I just posture myself for a second and just look at my cards one more time. It's not often that you get pocket aces, and it's even less often that you're forced to fold them on the turn. So for that reason, I muck my cards here, and the opponents are off to a river in a nearly $2,200 pot. Hoping I made a great fold here, I'm going to be really embarrassed if they turn over like kings and queens. When the river comes, the king of spades, the small blind sure enough turns over a set, pocket tens, and the hijack mucks his cards. Really stoked on the way I played that. Even though I lost a good amount of money in the hand, I saved 525 on the river. Maybe I could be even folding on the raise on the flop. Either way, saving 525 is no small feat. We rack our chips and head to the cage. We get out of the game for 3085, so we end up making 1156 in the 
live game. Overall, I made 1762 on the session, including all the promotions. With 14 and a half hours played at the casino, that comes out to $121 an hour. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.